Today, my grandson Josh said he would help with cooking. Although I've served the dishes I've made before, we haven't cooked together much, so I was really looking forward to it. Since he's only four years old, I entrusted him with making hamburger patties. To my surprise, Josh skillfully shaped the patties. Just like my son did, I imagine Josh learned to cook by emulating his father's example. The hamburger we carefully made together looked even more delicious than usual. Since Kenny was running late due to a busy work period, Maria and Josh and I decided to have our meal first. On the dining table, besides the hamburgers, there were other treats like salad, soup, and dessert, all of which Josh had helped prepare. Josh looked content as he gazed at the appetizing dishes, and I couldn't help but feel joy seeing him like that. I wonder if mom and dad will be happy? With an excited expression, Josh inquired. Oh, they'll definitely be overjoyed. As we chatted, the intercom at home rang. It seemed Maria had arrived. Josh and I welcomed Maria with smiles. Maria's expression darkened, and she glared at me as she entered. Josh's face, which had been sparkling just a moment ago, clouded over. Maria completely ignored us, strode into the room, and then did something unbelievable. She glanced quickly at the dishes lined up on the table, only to discard them directly into the trash can right in front of her. Who would eat something made by a sick person? I don't want to risk getting infected. The words directed at me when I was temporarily discharged were hurtful. Maria, with a half-smile, spat out profanities that hardly resembled a parent. Faced with such appalling behavior, I was left speechless and stunned. At that moment, it was the young Josh who extended a helping hand to me. I am Kathy McGregor. Having reached retirement age, I am enjoying a leisurely time away from work. As I sip my morning coffee, memories from the past come flooding back. I have a son, Kenny. Although it may be hard to imagine from my current lifestyle, until Kenny reached adulthood, those were days when there was no time to rest. This was because, in my mid-thirties, my husband suddenly passed away due to illness, leaving me as the sole caregiver for Kenny. Having moved to the city after marriage, there were no close relatives nearby to lend a helping hand. Since I had already purchased a house, I couldn't easily return to my hometown. The mortgage payments were still pending. So, without much time to dwell on my sadness, I worked tirelessly from morning till night. Still, I made a conscious effort to spend time with Kenny, ensuring he didn't feel too lonely. Kenny occasionally cried, but even at his young age. He understood the situation and became my source of comfort. On Kenny's days off, we spent time together, going to places he wanted to visit. We talked about various topics, from school to our favorite dishes. Sometimes, after school or on days when Kenny had no classes, he would come to my workplace and we'd spend time together until I finished work. Of course, I had obtained permission from my workplace, and it was where everyone showed understanding towards me as a single mother. When I was too busy to attend to things, my colleagues would talk to Kenny during breaks or help him with his homework, and it seemed like Kenny was enjoying himself. Mom, what's for dinner tonight? Whether it was a school day or a day when we commuted home together from my workplace, Kenny always asked me this question. He later told me that he enjoyed helping with dinner preparations from a young age because he liked the dishes I made. It all began with tearing lettuce for salads, mixing potato salad, and preparing sauces. Kenny found joy in cooking with me and accomplishing tasks independently. I remember his eyes shining as he stood in the kitchen every day. The saying what one likes, one will do well seems to hold true. Although he went through a rebellious phase in high school, 
I consistently prepared lunch for him and handed it over. Even on days when we argued, he would still return the lunch container neatly cleaned. Perhaps Kenny's rebellious phase was relatively mild after all. Looking back, I realized that the lunch I had made was one form of communication for us. On the last day of high school, Kenny returned his lunchbox with a note saying thank you, mom, for everything. I couldn't help but cry alone at that time. Kenny's passion for cooking remained strong even as he grew up, and he chose to go to a culinary school after graduation. My son, who graduated from culinary school in no time, steadily honed his skills at a famous restaurant. Now, he was independent as a chef and owned his own restaurant. From the reviews, it seems that phrases like a dish that makes you feel nostalgic. Simple and friendly, yet unique are written, and it seems that the homely taste is very popular and thriving. Occasionally, I also take my friends to Kenny's restaurant. When he sees me, he always gives me a shy smile. I'm proud of how well he's grown up, even though he's my own son. Of course, there were tough times, but seeing Kenny thriving like this makes me happy and proud. Kenny got married early. Despite complaining that business owners have no time off and no opportunities to meet people, it's a wonder when exactly it happened. His wife, Maria, was initially just a customer at the restaurant Kenny manages. However, Maria fell in love with Kenny's cooking and became a regular visitor to the restaurant. Eventually, she even gave him her contact information, and their relationship began. Although Kenny had initially decided not to get involved with customers, he couldn't resist Maria's enthusiasm and decided to exchange contact details. Since they started dating, the two of them would visit my house together, and Kenny would treat us to his cooking. The three of us would chat while enjoying meals, and that was our delight at the time. I'll take care of it. With those words, Maria would take the initiative to do the dishes after the meal. Oh, it's fine. Please have a seat, you're our guest. Would Maria get along well with my son? Before meeting her, I had some concerns, but I also took a liking to Maria, who seemed refined and well-mannered. After dating for two years, the two of them got married and became a couple. On their wedding day, Kenny and I both shed tears, and our relatives laughed, it's a cherished memory. However, little did I know that our relationship as mother-in-law and daughter-in-law would remain smooth sailing only until that moment. The moment I began to feel uneasy about Maria's behavior was approximately six months after Kenny and I got married. On that day, Maria arrived carrying a luxury brand handbag that even someone like me, who is not well-versed in designer items, recognized. It was hard to imagine that Maria, a full-time homemaker, would purchase such an expensive item for herself. If that's the case, Kenny must have been the one who bought it. As long as the two of them are content and have a good relationship, it's not my place to criticize from the sidelines. With that thought in mind, I refrained from saying anything to Maria at the time. Since we got married, Maria has started asking for things more often. It used to be that I had to ask her if there was anything she wanted. But then, it was different. It all began with cosmetics from the department store, and gradually, the cost of her requests was increasing. Every weekend, she went to the department store and splurged on luxury brand items using Kenny's credit card. Was she trying to show off our wealth as the wife of a business owner? That was the impression I was getting from Kenny's stories. Not only that. Kenny often came home late from work, so he would have probably liked to delegate some household chores. However, Maria spent most of her time on her smartphone and didn't do much cleaning or tidying up, resulting in a messy house. Even when it came to cooking, she refused to try. 
your cooking is better. Of course, Kenny is a chef, so what he made is likely delicious. But the lack of motivation from the outset was hard to accept. Even if she lacked confidence in cooking, putting her heart into it would surely convey her feelings to her partner. While we were talking, Kenny maintained a brave demeanor, but his voice seemed somewhat lacking in energy, indicating fatigue. No wonder, he likely had no time to rest, juggling dinner preparations and room cleaning after returning home tired. Kenny, who was clearly overwhelmed, deserved sympathy. I resolved to inform Maria about Kenny's struggles the next time I saw her. That moment arrived sooner than expected, just one week after Kenny's arrival. Maria, accompanied by Kenny, was once again dressed impeccably today. As we sat down for tea, I subtly broached the topic. Maria, how have you been lately? Kenny seems a bit tired. If you could help out a little more with household chores, I'm sure it would be a great relief for him. I gently reminded Maria. She looked at me with surprise in her eyes. Well, recently I've been leaving everything to him, so I'll also do my best with household chores. I had hoped for those words in response, but reality turned out to be far less sweet. Her expression twisted, and before long, she burst into tears. This is terrible. I'm also doing my best with what I can. Kenny doesn't come home until late, and it's lonely. To be told something like that. She neither denied her past actions nor apologized for them. Seeing Maria cry like a helpless victim, I felt like sighing. While it was true that her anxiety stemmed from Kenny not coming home until late, wasn't it a bit excessive to avoid all household chores and indulged in wastefulness? Kenny said, All right, we'll leave now. Sorry, Mom, and thank you for today. As he comforted the still-crying Maria, and the two of them headed back home. Since that incident, Maria's visits to my house dramatically decreased. Sometimes, when she made an appearance, Maria would wear a slightly annoyed expression even when I tried to join the conversation. Kenny would apologize. I'm sorry for making you feel uncomfortable. I'll talk to Maria about it. Kenny kept repeating such apologies. Our relationship was deteriorating, and an awkward atmosphere persisted for about two months. But then, one day, a bright piece of news came our way. Maria was pregnant. Kenny had wanted children even before they got married. Naturally, I was overjoyed, especially since this meant I would soon become a grandmother. The two of us celebrated with great excitement. I have work, so I can't be with Maria all the time. There might be times when I need your help, Mom. It might be a burden, but I appreciate your assistance. Kenny bowed his head toward me. If it's about taking care of my grandchild, I was more than willing to help. Although I felt a little uneasy about Maria's relationship with Kenny, I was sure she would find her footing once she became a mother. Afterward, her once inconspicuous belly swelled until it seemed ready to burst, and Maria finally gave birth to her first child. Maria's first childbirth took time but I was relieved to hear that both mother and child were healthy. From pregnancy to postpartum, I supported them with household chores and childcare as much as I could. Many things I had forgotten about parenting resurfaced, and at times, it felt challenging. However, being blessed with an angelic and adorable grandson made me truly happy. Maria continued to be demanding, as usual. She asked me to buy things and prepare diapers. But seeing how she doted on her newborn son, Josh, put my mind at ease. As time passed, Josh turned four years old. While my son's growth was rapid, my grandson, whom I didn't see every day, 
seemed to grow significantly each time we met. Josh, who used to wobble as he took his first steps, then ran around the park freely. He shared stories about his experiences at daycare and the fun things he did. As Josh continued to grow, I still supported with household chores and childcare, often bustling around Kenny's house. Then, part of my responsibilities included picking him up from kindergarten. Maria, on the other hand, frequently left the house, leaving me to handle everything that a wife and mother should typically do. Maria often told me, Josh is happy to see you, too, Grandma. Spending time with Josh was my solace, and it remained incredibly enjoyable. However, as someone over 60 years old, I did find it a bit challenging. On days when Josh didn't attend daycare, I woke up early to prepare breakfast for Maria and Josh, handle cleaning and laundry, and took Josh out to play. By early afternoon, I returned home, and the routine included grocery shopping for dinner. As those days continued, I found myself feeling more physically tired by the end of each day. The relentless days without rest may have taken their toll. One day, while on my way to pick up Josh from daycare, I collapsed. Fortunately, it was a busy street, and a passerby called for emergency assistance. I had dismissed it as mere exhaustion, assuming it wasn't anything serious. However, I ended up being hospitalized unexpectedly. They discovered cancer. Due to the delayed diagnosis, a major surgery became necessary. Looking back, I occasionally felt discomfort such as shortness of breath and palpitations. However, I attributed it to my age and didn't visit the hospital. After all, I had never suffered from any major illnesses in my entire life. I ignored the minor physical discomforts in my small body. Besides, with so many tasks to handle, I put myself second. It was ironic that I neglected my health even though falling ill would be detrimental. Regretting it was futile. Although I had numerous worries, I've decided to focus on treating my illness. Since I was hospitalized, Kenny often visited me with Josh during work breaks. Mom, I'm sorry. Did I push you too hard? Kenny apologized with a remorseful expression every time he visited. No need to apologize. I did it willingly. I assured him that there was no need for apologies. Still, I'm sorry. Despite my reassurance, Kenny continued to wear a sad smile. It's heartwarming to see Kenny's concern during my hospital stay. On the other hand, Maria had not visited me even once since I was hospitalized, citing her busy work schedule. I had heard that Maria started working as a part-timer, so I didn't pay much attention. Being a part-timer could vary in terms of workload and she probably needed time to unwind. Besides, given the lingering awkward atmosphere, I could imagine that visiting me would be uncomfortable for her. No, it was much better that she hadn't come to visit. Rather than dwelling on such matters, Josh's heartfelt get well letter was far more precious to me. Here, Grandma. This is the letter I wrote. Josh, thank you. I'm truly happy. Despite being only four years old, Josh grew up to be remarkably intelligent. He could already write letters by himself. The letter read, Get well soon. I envisioned him diligently writing the letter, thinking of me. Throughout my battle with illness, I was supported by my son and grandchild who cared for me. After a successful surgery, I finally received temporary discharge from the hospital after about two weeks. Although my body still didn't move as I'd like, being back home feels much more comfortable and calming than the hospital. During my hospital stay, I felt that Kenny was constantly worried about me and stayed by my side. 
While we were originally close as parent and child, it had been a while since we had a heartfelt conversation. Kenny enthusiastically shared stories with me, ranging from the restaurant's new menu to business matters. In turn, he genuinely listened to my stories. I could not express how much Kenny's attentive listening lifted my spirits. To show my gratitude, I decided to treat Kenny and the others at home to hamburgers. Hamburgers have always been Kenny's favorite, and they happen to be one of my signature dishes. I had already made up my mind to prepare them once I returned home. Whether it was after a performance or an exam, I always cooked this memorable menu for Kenny on days when he had worked hard. And that day, Josh would also be helping with the cooking. If I was returning, Maria entrusted Josh to me without hesitation. Although I'd served the dishes I'd made before, we hadn't cooked together much, so I was really looking forward to it. Since he was only four years old, I entrusted him with making hamburger patties. To my surprise, Josh skillfully shaped the patties. Just like my son did, I imagined Josh learned to cook by emulating his father's example. While being cautious about burns, Josh and I worked together to grill hamburgers. Once we plated them with tomatoes and lettuce, they were ready. The hamburger we carefully made together looked even more delicious than usual. Since Kenny was running late due to a busy work period, Maria and Josh and I decided to have our meal first. On the dining table, besides the hamburgers, there were other treats like salad, soup, and dessert, all of which Josh had helped prepare. Josh looked content as he gazed at the appetizing dishes, and I couldn't help but feel joy seeing him like that. I wonder if mom and dad will be happy? With an excited expression, Josh inquired. Oh, they'll definitely be overjoyed. As we chatted, the intercom at home rang. It seemed Maria had arrived. Josh and I welcomed Maria with smiles. However, Maria's expression darkened, and she glared at me as she entered. Josh's face, which had been sparkling just a moment ago, clouded over. Maria completely ignored us, strode into the room, and then did something unbelievable. She glanced quickly at the dishes lined up on the table, only to discard them directly into the trash can right in front of her. Who would eat something made by a sick person? I don't want to risk getting infected. The words directed at me when I was temporarily discharged were hurtful. Maria, with a half-smile, spat out profanities that hardly resembled a parent. Faced with such appalling behavior, I was left speechless and stunned. At that moment, it was the young Josh who extended a helping hand to me. However, once her emotions had escalated, it was unlikely that she would readily accept Josh's words. Huh. Josh, say it again. Don't mess around. Maria was furious, yelling at Josh with intense anger, but Josh remained calm. Well, you always just reheated prepackaged food, right? Even I could know it. The food grandma makes is truly delicious because it's made with love. As far as Josh could remember, Maria had never cooked anything from scratch. Josh was at the age when he became interested in food. However, he understood that his mother struggled with cooking. Although he had many things he wanted to eat, he refrained from complaining and ate instant meals to avoid troubling Maria. Even as a child, he seemed to grasp that his eating habits were not typical, likely influenced by stories from his friends. Yet, he never communicated this to Maria. Nevertheless, this time, due to an exceptionally hurtful remark, he couldn't bear it any longer. Josh continued to speak to Maria with an expression of anger. And you know what, Mom? Grandma used to be a chef before you and Dad got married. Dad told me that Grandma taught him how to cook. That's true. 
I used to work as a chef in a renowned traditional restaurant. Like Kenny, I graduated from culinary school and worked in restaurants for a long time, eventually rising to the position of head chef. I never shared this with Josh or Maria, so Kenny must have told Josh about it. So what? Just because she was a chef doesn't mean anything. Maria seemed surprised upon hearing this for the first time, but she quickly reverted to her previous tone and attempted to scold Josh. Disrespecting grandma is the same as disrespecting dad, isn't it? What's with you? So cheeky. Josh remained unfazed by Maria's words, staring at her with a cold, unyielding gaze. His tone, far beyond his four years, was matter-of-fact as he addressed Maria. It appeared he was finally unloading all the pent-up frustration he had accumulated. The argument between the two escalated, and I found myself unable to intervene. Every attempt to interject was met with a curt dismissal from Maria. Stay quiet. She snapped. As I pondered what to do, my attention was drawn to Maria's back. There, seemingly out of nowhere, stood Kenny. He had managed to finish his work early for my sake. As everyone present noticed Kenny, he finally spoke up. Is that what a person with children does? Maria, apologize to your mother. The chaotic mess of discarded dishes and our previous conversation. Kenny seemed to have heard and seen everything. His entire body trembled, revealing the strain of suppressed anger. I've been patient all this time, but I've had enough of you. Let's get a divorce. Upon hearing Kenny's words, Maria's expression changed dramatically from the earlier defiant glare. No way. Don't take it seriously. That was just a joke. Maria stumbled through her excuses, but Kenny regarded her with the same cold, calculating eyes he had used on Josh moments before. The tension in the room was palpable, and both Maria and I held our breath. Kenny pointed mercilessly at a discarded hamburger in the trash. Then what's this? Caught off guard by the exposed hamburger, Maria finally ran out of excuses. Wait, I was wrong. I just vented my frustration. Please forgive me. Maria's anguished voice echoed in the room but there was no one here to defend her. With one last apology, Kenny and Maria left, and the scene came to an end. And so, my long day ended. Afterward, Kenny divorced Maria through a lawyer. The custody of Josh naturally went to Kenny. Considering Josh's upbringing environment up until now, it was determined that Kenny raising Josh would lead to Josh's happiness. As a result of the divorce, I ended up living in Kenny's house. Maria moved out on her own, and even when she packed up all her belongings, there were no words of apology. Initially, Josh showed signs of sadness at the prospect of his mother being gone. However, when we told him that we would be living together, he was genuinely delighted. Grandma, let's cook together again. I'm looking forward to it. A while after we started living together, Kenny heard a story. It turned out that Maria had been having an affair with a co-worker. Despite working part-time, she had claimed to be busy with work, and now it made sense. Instead of Maria, who was indulging in infidelity, I was the one burdened to the point of physical strain. Kenny had suspected it, but considering Josh's well-being, he had tried to salvage the marriage and rebuild their relationship. As a restaurant owner, Kenny had worked tirelessly regardless of weekends, neglecting family time. He reflected on this and started taking time off to go out with the family. He also tried to communicate better as a couple, avoiding harboring resentment toward each other. However, Kenny's efforts were in vain, and Maria continued her affair. 
Kenny's words and actions didn't resonate with Maria, and her hostility toward me remained strong, leading to the incident. Kenny eventually gave up completely and decided to divorce. Later, it became clear that Maria had a personality that couldn't tolerate not being the number one priority. Frustrated with Kenny prioritizing work after marriage, she even resented me for doting on my grandchild. Feeling unloved by anyone, she turned to infidelity. Because Kenny worked hard for Maria, whom he loved, I felt sorry for her not realizing his actions. Maria, after property division and deducting alimony, was eventually abandoned by her affair partner as well. It seems he was just playing around. Now, she works multiple jobs day and night to pay child support. Does Maria regret her actions? We'll never know, but I hope she someday discovers true love. On the other hand, I worried about Josh being separated from his mother. However, Josh remained cheerful and actively helped me even without his mother around. Having endured hardships, I genuinely wanted to make Josh happy alongside Kenny. As for myself, perhaps due to no longer pushing myself too hard, my health had been steadily improving. I'd even started building up my strength and felt more energetic than before. Grandma, what's for dinner tonight? Josh asked me that question almost every day. As I answered, I couldn't help but see glimpses of Kenny from the past. Tonight, we're having homemade hamburgers. I savored the happiness of living with my family of three, and once again, I prepared dinner for them. How did you like this story? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, let's meet in the next video.